violence flares in West Berlin during a visit by American Secretary of State Alexander Haig. More than 30,000 people turned out to protest against American nuclear weapons. Mr. Haig is in West Germany for defence talks with Chancellor Schmidt and other leaders. The trouble appears to have been brief and well contained by police, but there are reports of arson and looting. Reporting on the day's events from West Berlin, Kate Aidy. Mr. Haig arrived to a friendly welcome from Foreign Minister Genscher and to considerable hostility from many Berliners. He came to reinforce a strong line on nuclear weapons in Europe and impress the West Germans in particular that the United States wants arms talks with the Russians without interference from anti-nuclear movements. These talks can succeed only if NATO proceeds with its plans to modernize its theater nuclear forces. Over 30,000 Berliners disagreeing with the Secretary of State marched in protest. A gathering of pacifists, left-wingers, environmentalists, mostly young and with strong anti-American attitudes. The authorities took no chances, and Mr. Haig must have seen the city only through a screen of riot police, some of whom moved into action while the Secretary of State toured the city. Muted disturbances, though, and only a slight indication of the growing opposition to American policy. Kate Aidy, BBC, West Berlin. Army explosives experts in Northern Ireland have been defusing one by one a lorry load of mortar bombs parked all night in the village of Besbrook in County Armagh. Despite an explosion inside the lorry last night, the mortar bombs failed to detonate. About 60 families were evacuated from the village, which was sealed off by the security forces, and everyone, including police, soldiers and cameramen, were kept well away. The explosives experts said the mortar bombs were of a notoriously inaccurate kind. All ten bombs have now been made safe and people have been allowed back to their homes. Essex won the John Player Sunday Cricket League at the Oval this evening. They beat Surrey by 21 runs, mainly due to a hard-hit 80 by Norbert Phillips. He's trying to get his 50 in one blow and he's done it. He's placed it beautifully, not only for four but for six. A magnificent way to go. And that's his third six, to the joy and delight of the Essex supporters there. And Phillips whacked another, an enormous blow this, many a mile, out of the ground, it's gone into the Harleyford Road for six. No. Shoot out and what a way to end! And Brian Barnes is the tournament players' champion, and it really might well it would have been better perhaps not to have ended like that. But Barnes the winner after that splendid 62, incredible 62 from Brian Barnes. Thank you very much. In the Italian Grand Prix at Monza, British driver John Watson had an extraordinary escape, and he crashed at 150 miles an hour he stepped unhurt from the wreckage. Watson said later he'd hooked two wheels over the curb and spun off. Italy's Alboreto was knocked out of the race, but Carlos Reutemann got through unscathed. Alain Prost finished a comfortable first ahead of Australian Alan Jones and Reutemann. There could be something of a record for London Zoo when Ching Ching gives birth to the first giant panda in captivity outside her homeland, China. John Kiddy reports on her progress. For an experience, Expectant mum, Ching Ching looked remarkably unconcerned about the whole business. A chorus of oohs and ahs greeted her as she popped out for a light lunch of bamboo shoots, giving her audience a chance to get that special photo. A panda pregnancy can last 160 days, and with Ching Ching 16 days short of that, the birth is now expected any time. And that's the news on two. There'll be more news at 10.20 on BBC One.